I've been looking forward to um, workshops on today. I believe uh, Brother Barton is first. Oh, all right. I'm going to turn it over to them. <laughs> Amen. They are working some stuff that <laughs> Third Street Fellow at its best. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Jesus loves you. Yes. This side of heaven. The word of God yes. tells me so. All right. Yes. Before I explain why that makes such sense for God to hear, my name is Randall Johnson. This is my lovely bride, Zelda. All right. All right. And our pastor, Brother Boyd, blessed us by allowing us to start a ministry at this church um, called the Personal Finance Ministry. Right? And it was a process to get this up and running. And our task is to introduce today's workshop leader, Brother Barton, who I'm sure everybody knows Brother Barton. But we have to set the scene for a second. Because we take this very seriously. Anybody who knows us <coughs> knows that we are fanatical about getting rid of that. Um, in my other life, I'm a judge. And my wife is another guy. And we go through a lot of training. My wife to help our patients. And for judges, we make decisions all day long. Decisions that determine whether or not you can spend the rest of your life in a penitentiary, whether you can write a check for $10 million, whether the state's going to take the kids out of your house. So it's very important that you make good decisions. You see where I'm going with this? The reason why. Just 
pay. So if you pay in, whether it's the note, the mortgage, or whatever you clean their house, whatever it is, they want you to do. If you are serving beautifully and faithfully, that master, what does the Bible say? You can't serve other master who is what? And we see it all the time. That's how $90 million goes missing. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why we have a lot of programs that can't get nothing done. That's why every time you show up at AMB meeting or church, they want to dig on down you by paying for this, paying for that, and fundraising it. Because we show up money. Why? We can't live on our ties. Why? Because all around the AMB convention, Rather than being in the face of that debt, we have to serve, we, we, we serve that, that, that master. And so, what Zell is going to take a minute or two to talk to you is how it affected our lives while we're serving that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
work together to cut out some things. So I, I took it home to Randy, and we looked at it, and he was like, well, I'm not cutting out the cable. <laughs> That's how the 
my personal finance ministry was born. Okay, I'm very excited that you all minister to sort this out. One of the most interesting conversations I've ever seen was my brother-in-law, Pastor Wilson, and my father-in-law, Reverend West, discuss whether you should tie on a gross book day. Why don't you all sort that out? <laughs> but we have become fanatical because of the transformation that yeah. happened to us. Yes. And the image I always had, and I always tell Zelda is, did you all know that Gary Tubman had a gun? Yeah. Did you all know that? Yeah. Nobody says she knew how to shoot that gun. <laughs> and nobody can tell me that if some slave traders rolled up on her with some slaves who tried to get up north, that she could do anything about it with that gun. And what I've heard and what I've read is, that was not for the slave trade. Can somebody, who was that going for? The slaves. The slaves. Because she did not want anybody coming off the plantation carrying a chain of bone. Mm -hmm. How do you want to help anybody out? How do you want to get the free out if you just mm -hmm. carry a chain of bone? Mm -hmm. you that some slaves were happy, fast and treat us good. Yeah. Yeah. You could read square meals a day. We just have to do what he says. Life is good. Some people like being in debt. And Harry thought, no. <laughs> you have to have that level of urgency to get out of debt. And that you know, you're going to get us all killed. So I will kill you. <laughs> that, that was her. That, I don't know if she never had to do this. I don't know if the moment came, but she had to have that attitude to get out of debt. So that's the drive that we have. Whatever comes up, whenever we talk about addressing that, we have that attitude about it. And so we went to Reverend Boy, he blessed us with this, and real quick so I can get Joe up and running. This is what we do. We have monthly meetings. Before the pandemic, we met in person. But the pandemic changed things, so we started doing virtually. One of the good blessings that by doing virtually, we have people who attend from New York, Texas, we have people all over the place who found out about the ministry and it's helped their lives. We read uh, books uh, by Dave Ramsey, Reverend uh, DeForest Stories, now we're reading the book, uh, Get Good with Money by Tiffany Alicia. Um, so I say read, we play the, the, the audio book uh, during the session. So when you're on the session, we play the audio book, you hear it. We I mean, listen to about 30, 45 minutes of the book, uh, go chapter at a time, and then we have a discussion. The discussion lasts half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour. Just, just, just a good discussion about the concepts we need, we need to hear about. We also have meetings where we listen to experts in subject areas, and we first started by leveraging the, the talent here at the church. Uh, our very first speaker uh, was. Uh, First Lady Lloyd's sister, uh, who talked, she had a testimony about how she transformed her life and that got us inspired, you know, to, to pursue this. Uh, but we've had members of the church, um, uh, Sister Davis, who works with the bank, uh, Dr. Yerby, who works at the bank, they, they spoke to us about bank accounts and checking accounts. Uh, we've had Harvey, who's a certified public accountant member of the church, talk to us every year. She, she faithfully comes to talk to us about what have they done to your taxes? And one year was like, what has Trump done to your taxes? So she, she goes over everything, and we follow that as far as getting our tax out straight. Um, we've had people talk about insurance. Uh, you know, this is the gauntlet. And uh, Brother Joe, uh, he, you know, he used to work, he just recently retired uh, for the Department of Education. He has a wealth of knowledge um, on how do you get new He's called, how do you get somebody to pay for college? And he's spoken about four or five times, I think, over the years. And, uh, so when uh, Elton uh, came to us with the idea uh, at a the conference, uh, you know, Joe's right there in North Point and said, he's happy to come and present. Uh, so thank you for listening to our testimony here. Without further ado, we turn the floor over to Brother Joe Barton.
Thank you, Randy. Uh, I mean, that's an excellent testimony, no question about it. You know, um, one of the things that I forgot, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, if you want to start uh, this at your church, uh, I encourage you to join one of our sessions, or a couple of sessions, see what we do, what's going on. And if you think that's something you want to do at your church, uh, you know, just talk to us, let us know. I'm going to pass this around with a pen. Just write your name, your church, your email, your telephone number, and we'll make sure you get a link. Uh, for our next meeting. Um, in October, Captain uh, uh, Rosario Reporter is my wife's sister's uh, husband's <laughs> wife's <laughs> brother. <laughs> Pastor Wilson's brother. Uh, he retired from the Navy. He's been doing day trading for years. And since he retired, uh, he's one of the highest ranking retired black officers of the Navy, and but he, he, he's done day trading for years and years, that's what he does, and he's going to talk to us again about day trading, what's going on the stock market. So that's October 12th. Um, if you want to get the information, sign this and give us your information. Sorry. Again, thank you, Randy and Zoe. Uh, we definitely have a vibrant uh, ministry here, and one of the things that I was on a, on a roll financially, you know, at Dave Ramsey, as he referenced, was also the first, or my introduction to how do you kind of get a handle to this uh, financial situation. And uh, from there, I got into this thing called FIRE, you know, as you know, you sort of, how you retire early and do all the good stuff here. And as a result of some of those strategies, you know, I too looked at time and my wife and I, we, 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 we had a spirited discussion about how we were going to get there, but we did. And as uh, Randy and Zelda said, I don't miss it. I don't miss it because there have been more blessings, you know, that have flowed as a result of that. I'm not here bragging or anything, but I'm saying though, I paid off my house long before I retired, and I'm, I'm what they call debt free. I, I don't have a car, everything's paid for debt free. So I have no problem with somebody knocking on my door or ringing the doorbell. I, I know it's not a bill for that. <laughs> See, I know, I know that. And that's freedom though. It's free. It's true. And what it has afforded me, though, in my family is that I, my wife and I, we travel a lot. Yeah. And so she likes to go to Martha's venues with her sisters, her real sisters, not sisters, her real sisters. It's five of us. They do that every year. We pay for that. We don't put it on charges or anything. And in addition to that, you know, we just went to Europe for two weeks. We go to the U.S. Open Tennis Tournament in New York, and I still tie. Yeah. I still, we still tie. Yeah. So we had two kids, and um, when it was time for them to go to college, would we be in this business of student financial aid? I've been a financial aid director. I've worked in the senior administration of uh, the state here in higher education. As Randy said, I just retired from the U.S. Department of Education. Um, and that area was the area for the student loan forgiveness. So that's the area I just retired out of. And so I'm very familiar with sending kids to college and listening to all the challenges that parents students talk about as it relates to attending colleges and universities. First of all, as parents, I know you're proud of your little boy and your little girl because you see him graduate.
waiting and crying, and everybody's having a good time. And so when the, the decision for them to attend college and university comes, all the logic that we had talked about, all our intelligence, and everything goes out the window. Because this young boy, this young girl wants to attend fill in the blank. And you all know that my baby is smart. She got into fill in the blank. And we so proud of her or him, you know, whatever it may be. But do you have $125,000? Hey, what do you mean 100000 Divided by four or five. Because it makes some of them. You know, they take them five years to win. Okay? So if you can't write a check for 125 miles, like that's just average. Because you talk about some of the Northeastern schools, and even here at the University of Richmond, you don't have to believe me, you can Google it on your phones. $75,000 a year. A year. Year one. I remember when I used to work for, I used to work in corporate America too. I worked with Sally Bain. Some people say that was the devil. But <laughs> some of y'all are worshiping the devil because y'all got a Sally Bain wrong. Okay. Let me talk about it. Okay. I know. I'm on the toes. I know. I'm on the toes. I know. And the thing is, is that I understand why you all took out that loan because you were so and you want this is the mix for some of them, it may have been the first one. And then I know one when I used to go to college and universities, I, and they would say, Well, Grandma, why don't you sign? Because by the time it comes up for you to pay, you'll be dead and you won't have to worry about it. Yeah. 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 So what I'm saying is, and you know that's your baby. So you know there's nothing you all won't do for your babies. But one in five of you right now, one in five, if I did a count on one in five of you are heavy in student loan debt. Either it's your debt, or your husband's, or your children's debt, because you did a parent loan. Okay? And you know she said, and he said, oh, I'll pay it back when I graduate, and they graduate, they get Mama, I can't pay you because I got to take care of my family. Okay? All right, y'all. And so now, coming back to tithing, now you have a challenge about tithing because you're paying a six or seven hundred dollars to the loan back. Okay? So when the pastor talks about tithing, I ain't gonna be tithing, you know? So what I'm saying is that we have to be smart. We have to be smart. And what I'm gonna share with you today are some strategies to be smart, okay? Okay, you gotta understand what student financial aid is and it's not that the government is going to pay for you to go to college. It's a joint situation. And we were talking at the table here about, I think, in, in the uh, North Carolina has a real special program uh, for in-state residents who attend state schools. And uh, we were talking about Winston-Salem, and I mentioned <coughs> a friend of mine is attending Fayetteville State. So I saw you are familiar with that program when they're paying you, I mean, through your tax dollars to go there. Okay. If the state is paying for you to get a degree, why would you decide, well, we went to Grambling State, so that's why I'm a mom, so you go to Grambling State. That's an out of state. You're going to pay four times as much where you can get your degree for virtually free being a North Carolina. So what, so come on, logic, <laughs> logic, unless you have that $125,000 check. So you send the kid 
kid down at Grandma's house, we were going to Grandma's for old generations. Okay? But can you afford to send them to Grandma now? You see? So those are the kinds of decisions that we make that are that logical. But how do we sit there and say, and then after we send them to Grambling and then when it's time to pay them off, we get mad at the servicing company. Oh, why well, they keep asking me about paying this loan? <laughs> you the one that decided to go there? That was your decision. And then you get mad. And then you tell your preacher, and the preacher's talking about time. I ain't got no money for time. I don't know why he keep bringing that up or she keep bringing that up. Making good decisions. What types of financial aid? Student loans, that's the number one. And, and as Randy said, that's the devil, so be careful. I'm not saying don't do it at all, but make that your last resort. Okay? You have things such as uh, work study, Pell grants, and of course scholarships. So those are the types. And those sources can come from the federal government, state government, um, organizations. They also can help you with that to pay for it going to college. The free application, everybody, I'll give you maybe 150000 or 40000 Everybody needs to fill out that free application. Everybody. What did I just say? Everybody. I know some good English teachers in here, so I've got to be careful, but everybody, okay? Okay? Now, health events, I'll share a few of those, and then we'll have some questions and answers. Scholarships, let's say, you want to invest at the top. That should be your top priority for your, and then these are my terms. If you use your little buff and Joe, they make so sweet and all of that. Then give them some responsibility. Okay? So if they want to go to Grambling and you live here in Virginia, okay, but well baby, we're going to see about some scholarships in Okay? If that's where you want to go, you know, then we're going to see about putting together some scholarships. And, you know, we're going to see if the fraternity, sorority, uh, if you work at a union or your company, we're going to, we're going to look at all avenues for scholarship if that's the way you want to go. Grants, grants are always essential to the baseline. And some of the, some grants can be what colleges call it tuition remission. That means they'll reduce the tuition for you to come to that college. Most private institutions will do that. State institutions don't have as much uh, latitude with that, but definitely private institutions. So it may be cheaper to go to some private schools than some state schools. It just depends on what state and what private institution you're referring to. Work study. Ain't no wrong with working. No, I mean, some people like this is kryptonite. Uh, no, I ain't got time to work. I, I ain't got time in the library. I'm studying. I will. 20 hours a week, nothing wrong with that. 20 hours. 20 hours. And of course, I talk about student loans. So we want to stay away from those. Most of the, of the financial aid is distributed by the federal government through student loans, and of course, I'm sure you all have heard of Pell Grants. Um, you want to make sure there's Particularly if you're eligible for a Pell Grant, there's something called the SEOG, that's the Supplemental Educational Opportunity Grant, and that's a supplement to Pell. Basically, that means that they will help you if your family situation is pretty strained from a financial standpoint, then you can supplement the Pell with an SEOG. A lot of people don't even know to ask. So be sure you ask about that for your son and daughter. When you travel to these schools 
to see which one you want to attend and all of that. One thing about attending these schools, I encourage families to do that, but don't do it on a weekend when it's football or a basketball game. Go during the week because you have a better feel of the institution. And I encourage you, because I, you know, I have a little organization now, and I set up appointments where the family would go in and talk to a financial aid person, someone from admissions, as well as uh, someone in the academic area. So you want to have those kinds of conversations as well as someone in the housing area to make sure you get a good feel for the institution. And don't go to an exam time, okay? Because they are going to, and don't go in the beginning of the school year. They, they ain't going to have a whole lot of time for you, but in that middle, you know, particularly spring break when it's on a campus, that's a decent time to, to go. Uh, but you want to also kind of go with this when the other students there so you can get a feel for the campus. See, this is one with graduation. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, graduation. Yes, the average student has $25,000 walk out of college. Undergraduate. Undergraduate, that's a thing, lunch. Okay, so I'm going to go to a private institution, it can be anywhere with 75000 So 75000 so how much you going to make in your first job in that drama degree? Because <laughs> uh, you know you let her do what she want to do. You made what you want, babe. Okay? Alright, $75,000 in student loan, and she making thirty five dollars she lucky at Starbucks and then you got to send a check to help her with her rent. Had they attended another type of institution, that wouldn't have been the situation. So you have to be logical about making these financial decisions. Why are y'all letting a 17, 18 year old with no financial experience make a hundred thousand dollar decision? That's what y'all doing. Love that baby. That's my baby. That's my baby. I say, look, and I, I'm telling you all this, and I can be a regret, but my son got into Columbia up in New York. Our family had this all oh, first one that got accepted in the Ivy League school, and they all, my in laws, just, woo, my brother and my family. So, at that time, it was about $35,000. And then while we were going through this process, they said that the Board of Visitors had just had an increase, and so man's almost fought. I said, man, God did this going up. I said, this ain't happening. Oh, have any of y'all seen I'm going to date myself. But did any of y'all see the exorcist that moved? And we see the person head turn around. <laughs> When they were telling me that, I'm out of money. My head's coming around three times. Because I ain't doing that. And so now, my, I'm the enemy. My family's coming to me. That boy got in the car. I'm here. All the family. You my brother. We, we, we tight. And you, man, come on, man. Come on, man. You got in the car. You, bro. I said, nah, bro. What are you doing that? What are you doing that? I'm listening to parents whose kids went to those kind of like Cornell, Dartmouth, and all that, on the phone crying that they can't afford their basic living because they spend, they're paying back that student loan. So what I'm saying to you is this is that you can make this work, but it ain't gotta be there. He ended up going to Morehouse College because they had someone there in Columbia called Martin Luther King Scott. I said, now he going to the college of Martin Luther King Rich. <laughs> okay? And he went on a full ride tuition, room and board, and a book site. And I would tell you about this point story. When we went there for orientation, and they had, they had boarding homes, they had these ice sculptures, 
you know, parents, you know, everybody just gathered around and get ready to do the party ceremony and all that good stuff. And I was eating all the shrimp. <laughs> I'm dipping and eating. My wife said, see, you don't have to act like that. I said, yeah, I do, cuz. I ain't paying. <laughs> and uh, I come back, I come back, and he said, well, um, what, is, is your son on a scholarship? all kind of other stuff, 
But I'm talking about some real stuff here. Yeah, looking at, like I say, sorority, some uh, fraternity, the AMB church, their scholarship, the lay organizations are offering scholarship. So if you're part of these organizations, of which you all are, then you can take advantage of it. National Association of Black Engineers, that's another group that provides scholarship, of course, labor unions. Some of you work for folk. I used to work in South Bay. They offer scholarships for dependents. And so my daughter got a scholarship from them as she went to spell. So what I'm saying is that these things are dual. Some of you work for them. If you don't know, check with your HR folk. They'll let you know if there's a scholarship. Of course, the military. You can either do it on the front end with ROTC, or some of you who are going back to school, you can do it through, they call it DSST now. It used to be Dante's. So but there are ways that you can get that. Okay. Yes? See, see that? Y'all need the money on the team. Y'all need the money. And then y'all complain about your taxes being high and they can't tap. You see what I'm saying? You've you got to be smart with these things. There are a lot of options and opportunities. Now, the FAFSA comes out every year and you have to apply every year. Got to do it every year. Now, they had a snafu. Now, I'm glad I didn't work on that department because they, they caught. Yeah, they, they got in trouble. They got in trouble government-wise. But they slowed that process down. Now, according to uh, they fixed that. And so now the fashion should be coming out in about another two months. It should be coming out the new one. If you have any questions, check with your high school counselor about when the faster should come out. And you should have a real good relationship with the high school counselor. You really should. And you should start that in your student's sophomore year. Sophomore year. That's when you should start. Because that person can help you with all the testing that needs to take place, whether it's the PSAT, SAT, or ACT. I know all these acronyms. Y'all say, oh my gosh, this guy is flooding us out here. But those tests are important. Some schools make them optional. But it's better to take those tests if you can. And then also, a, a strong high school curriculum is important. Some, some of you are saying, yeah, your, your son and daughter are going through school, and they're doing all right, making A's and B's, fine. But they're not being challenged. So they need to be the most rigorous academic preparation that they can get. And that's taking not just honors, but AP or IP. That's what, that's what they need. And then, and take the test. I, and, and another one, I'm going to you, oh, you, what's your man? What's your name? Come, come here. I know she said, I should have said I went to South Africa, and I said, the person that's the most creative that I was going to get at to, so. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you you go to Johannesburg or you go down to Cape Town. Oh, you too young to go to Cape Town. Don't want to go there. But go to Johannesburg or Durban. You will enjoy South Africa. Yeah. But like I said, you gotta do that fast. And like I said, there are a lot of opportunities. You know, with the military and other to get those resources. And the federal government and the many organizations use the FAFSA as a basis for determining whether you're gonna get a scholarship in some cases, or the federal government, how much you're gonna be eligible for. So that's what the FAFSA determines. Yep. And then um, you can go to studentaid.gov to get that information. So you make sure you have all your financial information in. Then don't get mad because this is the government asking for you. Y'all get more information to the social media people. Then, you know, this is to help your son and daughter. So y'all just go and click 
click on stuff. They say, you agree with the time? Yeah, I agree. And you just click and go, and you're like, why do you know these emails and all these ads and stuff? Because you have given them permission to send you that stuff. So, yeah. Okay? The FAFSA is completed electronically. Back in the old days, when I had to do that. Well. <laughs> it was all paper. And you had to get the paper, you had to get the stamps, you had to send it off and all that. But now it's all electronic. It's all electronic. Which is a lot more efficient. And you get what's called, they call it, they don't call it student aid report anymore. They call it ISAR. So that's the electronic student aid report, essentially. And so, but it's coming from that. So that means the government has analyzed your data. They send it to the school to say, okay, this is how much that person can receive. Or they'll send it to an organization that you deem them to send it to. That once that's done, you can, you can go back to the school because they're going to send you something called an award letter. An award letter is going to say, this is how much, based on the federal government, what we can do. And because of that, we're going to give you this, and you get something called an award letter. Some people look at that award letter and go like, oh, man, this is tough. Well, you can negotiate that award letter. So don't just get the letter and go, well, that's what, the, that's what the people said. You can negotiate. You can call the college and say, yeah, man, your son and daughter got to be good. Man. But you can say, hey, I looked at your data, and my son and daughter are in the top 5% of the students in your class. So you can do better with this. Still give you some pushback. Well, uh, we got a lot. Of, and you just hold it. I call it the pregnant pause. When they say no, just say, just wait. It's I, okay, we'll give you something. I, right. I. Right. So that's what you got to be, that's strategic. That's strategic. Start early, work with your counselor early, contact local groups, your religious organizations like the AME Church, lay organizations in particular. Um, conduct the internet search, talk with parents and others about student assistance with employers, because my daughter, when she went to school, she got, at that time, uh, the time to fast. She worked one summer, they had a summer program for students interested in journalism. They gave her $5,000 in a scholarship to go to school. So what I'm saying is that there are a lot of options to make this work. And if you the deadlines, y'all, you can't be late. It can't be late. You can't be late. The first stack of folks that are rejected are the ones that are late. And you know what the second stack is? Misspelled words, you know, misinformation. That's the next step, stack of rejection. So you can already eliminate it yourself if you don't adhere to certain kinds of things. And if they ask for an essay, get, I mean, come on, y'all. Give a good essay. You can't say that, you know, they shouldn't ask for it. Or they just, what they do? And they ask for an essay. I suggest work with your counselor or teacher, you know, to get a good essay and then modify that essay based on what you're applying for. But get a nice, tight essay. Now, I'm not telling anybody to use artificial intelligence on these essays. But, <laughs> um, that might be a tool. I might be a tool. I'm just saying. Now, you got to be honest if it asks you, if, did you do, you know, artificial intelligence? Because I've seen essays, I've been on these committees, and I've seen essays, particularly of late, and they're a little too tight. You know, I'm like, these, these are all SAT words in the first paragraph. <laughs> and I'm like, mm. and so I'm so then I'm gonna look at that high school curriculum and I say, they didn't even take all this English. And they write like this. No, they don't. Just next one. I don't know. You know? And the most important thing is don't pay for services unless 
just somebody like me. But don't pay for the scholarship services. There are a lot of services out there that you know, want you to, they, they say, we guarantee, nobody can guarantee you anything because it's based on eligibility. So I may be able to do something that you may not be or vice versa. So, okay, I'm just about done here. Okay, so the landscape out there, it is a challenge. I, I'm not going to stand here and say it's not, but it's dual. It's dual. And you've got to be willing to put some sweat equity into it. And if you're willing to do that, it's possible. Just like I say, if, and I, you know, I love Norfolk State University, but I remember I, I went up there and they had these young people that were from Maryland and they couldn't afford the out-of-state tuition to attend Norfolk State, but they were in the bank. So I, the mom came up to me and said, well, so what am I going to do? I said, man, I should probably be telling you this, but if your uh, son got to Norfolk State, that's good. I said, do you have his award letter? She said, oh, yeah, I got a ring. She pulled out. It was nice. I said, well, if he go back home to Maryland and go to Morgan, he got a Pell Grant. He had an uh, SEOG. And I said, he uses those plus what Morgan, I mean, the state of Maryland has for in-state students. You may get a refund check for going to Morgan State. Norfolk State, you can't even afford the first semester. And she was thought I was like, mm, how dare you say that? <laughs> you know, I mean, man, I ain't trying to embarrass you or be making spirited remarks, but you, you have a challenge to make it the first semester. So what I'm saying, be smart. Be smart. This works. It works. So any questions? Now, I have up here uh, some online scholarships that you can, you know, uh, reference. Even if you don't need them right now, you know, at some point, you can probably have a niece, nephews, some cousins uh, that will need the scholarship search. Now, one scholarship search, I, I mean, one scholarship I just want to mention is called the Ron Brown Scholarship. And that scholarship is an excellent scholarship. Excellent scholarship. They provide um, scholarships for students to attend any college in the United States. Any college. And they provide a very hefty amount for that student to attend college for four years. For four years. And that's another thing. Some colleges will what I call front load students. That means they take care of you in your freshman and sophomore year and they kind of drop you for your, your junior senior year. So whatever you get from a college or from an organization, try to make sure it's for all four years. Okay? All four years. Now, I give you all free information today. Free. Free. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I got these scholarships up here, so that means you can apply to these and go to it. Free. Now, if you want a concierge situation, then you got to contact me. And I work one on one with you and your family. I don't, you know, because I know y'all love your children. So I don't get into disputes. I just lay it out. And I let you all make the decision. Because I'm not going to say, why don't you talk to him and tell him, oh man, oh. Mm -hmm. Or so, or so, like, man, why, why you tell my daddy that? Why you tell him, mm -hmm. no, uh -huh. I just lay it out. And you make the decision. Okay? Alright. I'm, I'm getting the rap and they got like they do an Apollo. They about to hang me off the stage here. Alright, any questions? If I don't have any questions, I think all lines are clear. Come up here and get your your information. Okay? Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Barton. Man, this was a wealth of information that you deposited on today. Amen. Amen. Uh, the 
information today hits home. This is personal. <laughs> we all are working and invested in our offspring. We have family that have offspring that is going to be graduating soon. This is how we set the foundation. First is in your own house, personal. Getting your stuff in order, being a good student. And I like what Judge Johnson and Sister Johnson presented to us. And one of the things that they did as personal finance was seek professional advice. Being a product of a single parent, a disabled parent, graduated high school and working at Drexel Heritage was the destination for me. College was nowhere in my background or my future because the resources and the information was not there. Military was my saving grace. When it enlisted, but within that five year period, some things were exposed to me. And all I had to do was do the work, apply, and I got a set. And this is one of the things when I submitted that application to become a naval officer. They looked at my package amongst all of the other candidates that submitted that, that was submitted for this particular program. And they told me that my package didn't look like the other packages. And I should not submit it. But I went in prayer. I say that I got this. And I submitted it in spite of what they told me. And at that command, only two of us out of 20 got accepted. And that board that said that my package didn't even fit the criteria, my package was chosen. They all were surprised. I was surprised because they told me that, it, it, you know, it, it wasn't good. And as a result of that, I got a free ride to any college, university in the United States of America. Free, debt free, half the university. Graduated, got commissioned as an O1E, making big dollars. <laughs> Because it was more than an E5 made back then in the 90s. And as a result of being in the officer ward room, I heard other conversations. Being an African American, I was the only one in that room. They were talking information that I never heard. They said, uh, I never take promotion. When I receive the next rank, that money goes into a savings. And I continue to live off of another rank, a lower rank. And I said, you know, all my bills are paid. I'm, I'm saving all my bills are paid. I can live off of old money for the rest of my life. <laughs> so as I continue to get promotions, receive promotions while I was single, I lived off of O1E. 
and all those other promotions and bonuses went into savings and investments. Church will prosper. 